Hello world, I'm Eva from Sim Little Explorers and today we will continue our Scratch adventures. Last time, if you recall, we learned about loops and variables. Today we will continue talking about that, but we will also learn much about functions. Functions are a very important building block in programming and they will allow you to do many interesting things. Let's start by making a new project here on Create. And we will wait a little bit until it loads. Here it is. This project will be all about making sandwiches. So we will need appropriate backdrop. I'll choose this nice kitchen. And of course we will delete scratch because we need someone a little bit better at making sandwiches. And let's choose our sandwich maker. Let's pick D. Okay. So let's first talk about functions in general. Function is process that takes certain inputs and produces outputs. So we don't actually have to know uh, what happen what's happening inside of the function. We just put inputs and get back out. Right, so we already use many different functions. Uh, Scratch is full of them, like this function say takes one argument. Like here, we say hello, but we can say something else, like say goodbye. So, this goodbye or hello or any type of text we put in here is input and we are producing output and that's that we are printing to screen that string. In programming we say uh, text is of da data type string. So these are built-in functions, functions that we can use that are already written. We just use them but of course we can define our own functions. Function is just a reusable piece of code that we can call again and again with different inputs and it will produce different outputs each time. Let's see what steps are necessary to produce a sandwich and we'll keep it simple so we will just say what will we do. So we want to have few say comments like for example I want to say take one slice of bread Cam on it, put cheese, put salad, and I guess you're done. So that works, but what if I don't want to use ham on it, I want to use tuna or something else or I want some specific type of salad, I want cucumbers or tomatoes. Solution is to wrap this type of code into a function which then we can use with different inputs and we will always get different outputs. So let's see now how to define functions in Scratch. Mm, here in more blocks, this block, we will make a block. Now this first part is to define the name of a function. So we will use order because goal of our function is to uh, take some parameters that will be sandwich ingredients and we will make sandwich with them inside their function and return to our customer. Okay, so name of function is order and here in options we are putting parameters. Parameters are things that will vary in our functions. They're like variables. However, they're only 
uh, scopes in function. That means they are visible only in functions. So for our sandwich, we want string. I already said that string is a programming type that is used for text. So he, if we have some text, we will use string data, data type. And we will call this, mm, let's say, main, like main ingredient. And let's put another string input that will be salad. Okay, so now we define header of the function. This function is called order and it takes two parameters, main and salad, and both are of the type strings. And now we can transfer our code here. However, we don't want to say put hammer in because we don't know if that is main. If customer set ham for their main choice, we'll say main. Then we'll put cheese as default because we didn't specify cheese as special parameter option. So we will put cheese in any sandwich. And for salad, we will put this type of salad. Okay. So now we defined our function. Now to call it, we will use it here. You see it's already created here. So now we call our function or invoke our function as it's said in most programming languages. So now we need to order our sandwich. And to do that, we need to input two parameters. So when we call our function, we need to say what will be main. Let's say we want tuna. And what kind of salad we want? We want cucumber. So now we are making special parameterized sandwich that will have tuna and cucumber as special ingredients. And we will of course have bread and cheese because they are default in every sandwich. Let's see what happens when we order now. So take one slice of bread, tuna, put cheese, cucumber, and then so what's great about it is that now we just can very simply change this output by changing these inputs into the function so we can say ham and tomato and now our sandwich will be different so now it will take ham and it will take tomato, but otherwise it will be same. So it will take bread and cheese as default, and then we can customize it but by our own inputs. If you recall from the last time, we did some work with this join operator. So we can change this little bit by using join, so it's a little more consistent, a little prettier. So we won't say just say cheese, we won't just say say ham or say tuna, but we will say put tuna. And we can do that like this. So in this say, we won't say just main, but we will say main. And here we will say put and white space main. Okay. And we'll put that in say. And also here we won't just say salad, but we'll say put salad. Awesome. And let's do one more little detail to make sandwich when we are done with this option. Let me see where is sandwich. Mm. It should be here. Okay, so we want the sandwich to appear when sandwich is done, not before. So we will first hide it. When we start the script it will be hidden. To hide it we can use in looks block this hide command. So now when we start our script, sandwich is hidden, right? And we want it to show when we are done, when sandwich is done. So we want to go back to this script where we started our function. And here at the end of the function we want this sandwich to appear. To do that we can use this broadcast message. 
So when I finish this, I want to broadcast message. Message one. We can of course do our message. Let's say done message. Okay. And now here in Taco, I want to say when I receive done. So when I receive that event that I defined there, and that means I came to the end of the function, I want to show. Okay. So let's see if that works. So we are starting script again. Ta-da! Sandwich magically appeared. Just a joke, it's not magic. We defined all of that in our code. So it works as we expected. So what's great about it about this is how easily we can change these inputs into the function and we will get most of the same code with few differences that we ourselves customized. And that's the gist about the functions that they are reusable pieces of code that we can call again and again with different inputs and they will produce different outputs. Okay, let's try one more function. So we will define new function. I want this one to be a function that will take two inputs. It will take a word and it will take a number and we want to repeat that word as many times as we say in our number so we want to repeat it number of times and we will define that number in our input so first let's define header of our function we will make a block and we will call it repeat okay and now we want to take string input that we that will be our word and we want to take number input let's call it num okay okay so that's header of our function now for the body body is actual code that will be inside that function so we want to repeat this word this num of times to do that we need to revisit again our concept of loops anytime we need to repeat something some number of times we want to use loop so we will use this repeat loop and how many times we want to repeat it we want to repeat it num times right because that's input we will put input we will put in our function and what we actually want to repeat, we want to repeat this word. So we will use say block. Okay, we will say word. So this variable word, this parameter word, we will say for one second. And then we will wait for one second. Okay, so now let's try to call it. We'll we can remove this and we can call repeat. We'll repeat, let's say hi, three times. Okay, let's try something else like repeat. You are awesome. Oops, and let's say we want to repeat it five times. So, here when we call function, we use arguments, we use real values that we want to use. Like, we want to repeat you are awesome, and you are awesome is in definition function re represented with this word. So anything that happens to word in function, we actually can imagine that we're replacing this word with you are awesome. And also anywhere where we have num, we replace it with five because these are actual values that we call fun function with. So they just get transferred into these parameters. And that's all about functions. If you like this video, please subscribe, leave a comment down below and join us next time.
Thanks for watching.